Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for coming to the AMA. Developing the energy in here. Nope, it is a, it is a voice AMA. Like you can talk, you can talk in AM, AMA chat. Good morning together. Yeah, the so everyone, everyone who's listening, the vent bot music might be a bit loud. So what you can do is you can right click the vent bot no, and no. turn down the user volume. No need. We can, oh, it's we good can now? manage it. We can manage it globally. But just nice. To say, uh, yeah, we can get started now. It's ten thirty. I'll keep the volume down now. Great, great. All right, so we can get started. Just give a few more minutes. Oh, to make sure. Uh, yeah, there's still, there's still a few people that aren't here yet. <clears throat> Oh. All right, did you give a uh, we're ready to go? Uh, did we get started? Go ahead, take it away, uh, Akron. Great, great. Good morning, everyone. I'm loving the energy in the chat right now. Good memes, good vibes. So, this is the this is the official AMA for the for the concave finance server, and we know you have been waiting for some alpha and we have a lot of alpha for you today oh, i hope you're excited for this now today with today with us today the people that are going to be participating with us the court members are jayman who is who is um who's with us for operations can you can you introduce yourself for a bit jayman and what's up uh you know my name's jayman been around the uh, several dows uh bringing my you know my abilities here to help start up this co-op and it's been great to see the community how how together everybody has been and the wag me vibes all around you know i help out with the operations getting up the the co-op like i said running and uh just getting making sure everything runs smoothly great great thank you so much jayman up next we have an we have our amazing core member volk volk would you like to say some words about yourself yeah, for sure. Thanks for the intro. GM, GM to all. It means a lot having everybody here. Uh, looking forward to the opportunity to kind of break in and share the vision a little bit more. This kind of stemmed originally from my, you know, we'll see if it's a crazy idea or not. Uh, but, you know, I've been able to bring a lot of very talented people together to kind of execute on this. And then already seeing this amazing community form has been truly wonderful. Definitely blessed to have you all here. Wag me. Wag me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Voke. Now up next, our special guest for today, an amazing, amazing, an amazing person who has been with us, a very spiritual person, absolutely amazing, is Bike for Peace. Bike for Peace, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, good morning to everybody. I hope you can hear me. <clears throat> yes, we can hear you fine. Yes, so I mean, many of you know me. I'm the crazy guy with my bicycle traveling around, spreading whack me all over, and I want first to say thank you very much for everybody joining. Thank you to Vogue, Jamin, Akari, and Vogue, for every one of you to have me. It's a pleasure for me to share this energy with you. What we established here is unbelievable. You all feel the sensation of Vagmi. You can feel what we do here. It's pure love. And I mean, you know me a little bit, so I don't talk too much about myself. I just want to say really thank you for your time that you're bringing in here. And have, let's have a beautiful Ask Me Anything. Let's make it epic, like everything what we do at Concave. Yes, and we feel we feel the love from you too, Bike. We feel the love from you too. Thank you all. Thank you so much for being here. Great. So up next is our 
policy leader and leader um is our policy leader Miaoshi. Miaoshi has been a great has been a great contributor to the community. He's been very good at organizing. He's been very hey, active in the Miao Chinese Xi. OP. So Miaoshi, would you like to give an introduction about yourself? Yeah, of course. I think uh, people sort of know me, know the crazy side of me a little bit here in the community. But hi, good morning, good night to a different time zone. Happy Saturday. Yeah, I'm, I'm here to help the uh, the policy decisions going forward. We're here, back me for our Back me for longevity. This is what we're shooting for. I just want to say, you know, I really appreciate, you know, I really want to say thank you to the community. The vibe, the perspective, the wisdom and the love from, of from the community has been keeping me here. And I, I think it will be the fundamental piece to our future success. Thank you all for being here. And thank you, Miaoshi. We, we were glad to have you here. Now, we're in the server. Now, this is a big server. This is a great community. And we need people to keep to keep everything under control, right? So Wookie, Wookie is our guy. He's 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 the person. He's the person who's been working hard on the back end to make sure everything is running fine and well. Would you take it away, Wookie? Absolutely. Thank you, Akron. Hey, so grand rising all. First and foremost, I want to wish our community a great full moon this evening and a wonderful solstice next week. May the energy of the rebirth cycle of the sun bless each of your lives, and I mean that. I mean that. I am Wookie, the agile Jedi of Concave. The framework myself and the Scrum Masters have built within Concave has been masterfully crafted. It has been architected to be able to quickly and effectively scale to grow our model, our products, and our ability to deliver to the community. Uh, I look forward to hearing all of your questions and building the future with you all. Thank you for being you. Thank you. And great. So can everyone can everyone show some love to, to our core members and community members who showed up today for this AMA? Come on. Can we show some love? Come on. Come on. Great, great. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm loving the vibes. We have we already have 330 people listening in the in the chat. That's amazing. That's that's great. Thank you all for coming. And I guarantee you we will have some alpha today. I know I know you were looking forward to that. So um what we did is Nathan Noble and the team and the social media team, they gathered a list of questions that that every that the community members upvoted. So the most upvoted questions are what we have today. Now, is everyone ready to answer some questions? Everyone ready to just go give some alpha? Ready ready for for that alpha leak. Ready for that alpha leak. Great. <laughs> ready for the alpha leak. Let's go. All right. So our first question comes from community member comes from community member Fung. So Fung asks. What is the ultimate goal of Concave apart from the product itself? Ooh, a great question. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll start off with this, and then if anybody wants uh, to kind of key in right after, go for it. So, I'm sure a lot of you guys can probably tell by who's involved within the team and everything, and uh, a lot of the hints we've been dropping. Uh, first and foremost, ultimate goal of Concave is to further propagate the utilization of OOM as the DeFi reserve currency. We truly share that vision. This is a project at the end of the day that is by the OMIs for the OMIs. Uh, we all kind of met, worked together within the confines of the Olympus DAO as uh, contributors at first, fell in love with OOM, fell in love with the community, fell in love with the vision and, and what they're trying to accomplish. And so really at the end of the day, that is the most succinct way I can phrase exactly what the ultimate goal is. Uh, that might give you some questions about really, well, how are you going to accomplish this? And to kind of keep that succinct as well, the main way is building on top of it as a primitive, building out as many really innovative and kind of novel product lines as possible that can incorporate OM, kind of raise the velocity of OM, and really have it fulfill, you know, its ultimate goal of being a DeFi reserve currency. Great, great. Does anyone else want to chime in or be good? Well, it's been great, you know, it's been great working with Vilk and really speaking of the vision of the project of what we're doing. And it's been, what I think what truly has been amazing is really the community that we've built and the contributors that we have and, and, and this, this amazing co-op which we've created. And uh, you guys have been the ones to make this happen. And it's been truly, uh, it's been truly amazing to, to see it all happen and come together. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I want everyone to know that Concave would not be anything without our community. So you all... You all have made this possible. Real quick, real quick, J-Man. Sorry, I'm sorry to interject. To Your volume? We're getting feedback too low. Boosted, sir. Boosted for the for the Wagme vibes. 
Boost yeah, me, daddy. Uh, awesome. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is, you know, one thing that Volk touch on is innovation, right? There will be a lot. There are actually a lot of innovations in the pipeline. And the, the thing I want to mention is user community will be will be the part who's driving the innovation, who's driving, uh, who's uh, who's creating the innovation, right? In terms of, you know, in, in our, our road of achieving the goals, want to, you know, just want to call it, you're part of it. You're part of the innovation and mostly, you know, um, the way how we achieve it. I don't want to offer it too much, but for now, we want to push for a sort of, a, you know, the way at least the policy line is going to do things will be a decentralization of wisdom and decentralization of mind power and you guys will see it and and the so basically the short takeaway is uh you want to for, for us to achieve the ultimate goal you guys going to be the, the the you guys going to be the ones who's driving it yep there's the community it's the community that's going to drive everything so thank you all thank you all for being so dedicated for being so hard working for your passion thank you so much great so our next question okay. Akari, can I say something about the community? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead, Mike. I mean, family, I really need to tell you this because you know that I'm spending a lot of time in Discord. This is my, it's like my, it's everything for me. And I went through so many Discords the last years. But what, and I have to tell you this, guys, and you all feel this, but what we have in Concave is so beautiful. It's so strong. It's really, and I need to point this out. We do it all together. Nobody of us is anything here without each other. And this is what all is all about in Concave. We're doing this together, hand in hand. And it sounds cheesy, but this is really the magic of Concave. We're doing it together with each other. And for this, I want to say to everybody in here, thank you for being so nice to each other, for helping each other, for supporting each other. So really, this is a big thanks to everybody. Yeah, yeah, no, great. Thank you so much. Thank you for so much for saying that. That's absolutely... That's absolutely true. Now we have 391 people listening. Can we pump it up to 400? Well, I go through the second question. Okay, so I know everybody was waiting for some alpha. So this is a good question to start off with. Give us some alpha regarding... Oh, you know, Lehman says, give us some alpha regarding the launch in tokenomics. What's the initial market cap at launch? And what's the maximum allocation and at what price per token? Awesome, awesome. Okay, this one... Can't go too much into the specifics just right now because ultimately what we want to see happen is uh, what we have developed regarding this model. Uh, we want to first and foremost be able to publish it and get a lot of feedback from the community because this is really kind of the first step for the project. And ultimately, the feedback we get from the community, we want to make sure that you know everybody's happy with it and they have an opportunity to give feedback towards it as well. So we can kind of make it as optimal, equitable, and really, you know, as wag me as possible for everybody involved. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, I can say that the way it works, I know a lot of people have questions regarding, you know, whitelist, you know, all the all the D all the deets regarding that, the WL, give me the whitelist. Uh, as you are well aware in regards to at least from the NFT perspective, that comes down to uh, instant whitelist, but also a retroactive airdrop when the snapshot happens. So what that actually means, I can leak for now. Um, people that purchase NFTs in this regard are gonna be getting a airdrop in the P token. Uh, so when we have the full write-up out for that, if you're not aware really how the P tokens work, uh, that, that will be fully disclosed for people that contribute in that way. And then regarding people that did proof of work in regards to Discord and kind of getting the roles, helping out the community, that is you know, really the main thing we're aiming for because we want to make sure we filter through people that are purely looking at this from only a whitelist opportunity. Uh, you know, I think the greatest disservice we could do is if we just kind of relied on whitelist hunters, right? We want to be able to build a strong community at its foundation. Uh, I know a lot of people maybe weren't too happy with the method we did in this regard. A lot of people also enjoyed it. I think we created a, a cool little gamification out of it. A lot of people made some good friends. They self-organized. They had a good time kind of building everything. And so for those people, uh, I'm sure you might be aware there's been a lot of speculation that basically every role increases the, the allocation for it. Uh, but a little alpha as well regarding that is that the the people that get through whitelist with the roles are able to get an initial allocation from the, the A tokens at a much lower price in regards to uh, basically when the liquidity bootstrapping event occurs, uh, you're, you know, you're recommended to go through a 10x on the on the fair value to kind of help uh, go through the kind of price discovery mode. Uh, so that'll be a lot later on. 
And so we're hoping that at least as it stands right now in this framework, you know, we can get some good kind of feedback from the community. Let us know if, if you like this, what's going on here. And then also from there, you know, what would be really cool to hear about is once we release the initial kind of draft on the hard numbers regarding the tokenomics, let's get some feedback as well. You know, we want to make sure that everybody's involved kind of along every step of the way. Community feedback and community-led engagement is the way to go. So I'm thinking that's what we got. Dang, Vogue dropping, Vogue dropping the bomb right there. That's some great alpha, right, guys? Great. So now that I know everyone's a bit excited, so let's 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 go to our next question. So our third question asks: Have the members of the core team ever worked together on other projects? When did when? Oh wait, no, sorry. J, sorry. Uh, J Mal Malagano asks. Have the members of the core team ever worked together on other projects? When did the idea of Concave start to form in your mind? Was there a determining event? How will you manage the whitelist between NFT holders, proof of stake, and roles, proof of work? Oh, you so you're sneaky, sneaking two questions. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, yeah, so we've all worked together, uh, at least within the Olympus DAO and kind of from within the Olympus community. That's really where all this kind of sprung up from. So it initially began when I was contributing in the Olympus DAO, kind of just looking at it from a partnerships perspective, uh, seeing the expansion of OM, like, uh, especially with Olympus Pro, further kind of strengthening the utilization of OM. Uh, I truly believe that the most important thing out there is, you know, kind of increasing that velocity for the token. So that kind of gave me the idea, you know, like OM needs more product lines, right? But OM has to focus on really the core product offerings. So they can only do so much. So my, my main kind of thesis behind it all was like, let's build something on top of OM as a primitive. Let's really help help them out in regards to the propagation of its utilization and get as many cool product lines out as possible that incorporate it. Uh, whether that comes from, you know, kind of more conventional DeFi products or, you know, incorporating it within the metaverse, uh, that's really the, the goal that we're shooting for here. Great, great. Thank you so much again, Voke. <clears throat> does anyone have to, does anyone want to add anything else or should I move on to the next question? All right. So also, I just want to say currently, other than this, we're, you know, every on a daily basis, we're team building. Oh yeah, team building oh, through the game. Building. Yeah, if anyone from the community can come and carry us, lately it hasn't been going so well. If anyone from the community can come and carry <laughs> us, uh, shoot us the end, please. We need some uh, some hard carrying though. Yeah, on, on the on the notion about you know speaking about the team and working together, you know, one thing that we really pushed uh, uh, from the from the actual contributors that we've been trying to set all of this together up. And how's my mic? I, I know some people were saying it was a little uh, low earlier. Uh, I have you. I have you set to two. I have you set to max volume, so it's fine for me. Must be low. Yeah. All right. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we really focus on daily basis. You know, really team building, and then the whole uh, methodology, which we, you know, with our our scrum jedis, as Wookie would say, is focusing on on being able to adopt and and, and optimize to continue building. And then on top of that, we've really been doing a lot of team building and you know having discussions all the time. We jump into the chat, to the voice chat, and we really talk about the project and just talk about life in general, just like in the community. We really push the community to like open up their mind and and dig deep into these these concepts that Epic, our, our chief of psyops, <laughs> has really probed for. Uh, but stuff like that is what really makes a, a strong team. Um, and like I said, Dota, as Miyashi would say, uh, Dota has been great because if you can play Dota together, man, you can you can take over the world. Uh, honestly, it's really what it comes down to, I think. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, yes, one user. Also, I know there was there was the second aspect. I kind of touched on it in the first question. Uh, regarding kind of like splitting how it works between the proof of stake NFT holders and the proof of work roles, so just wanted to clarify that we we touched on that in the first one. Don't don't think we forgot about that second part though. Proof of work is very important, guys. Proof of work is very important. Um, but yeah, uh, someone says, can can we speak a bit slower, please, for non-native speakers? Sure, sure. Uh, I you can got do it. That. T toning it down. The speed yeah, is being reduced. That. No problem. No. I think problem. Jayman also got some feedback. He's a little too, uh, a little too low still. Yeah, I did a little changes. I did a few changes on my mic. Uh, hopefully, it's a little better now. I guess. Not sure. Oh, yeah, it I is a bit better. Well, I gotta lower you down now. It's a little bit. <laughs> all right. All right. Good. Great. Great. All right. Um. And so next question. A lot of develop. Uh, Crypto Monkey asks. A lot of developments have occurred since the Discord opened. How does the current roadmap compare to what you had initially imagined the project to be? Oof, okay. First of all, this is a good one. <laughs> initial roadmap was definitely 
way less complex in scope. Uh, and then, you know, we did not expect to have this kind of crazy growth. Uh, definitely wasn't expecting that at all. Uh, definitely blessed that it did occur, though, because got to build this amazing community. Everybody's here. We're all vibing. We're all making friends. We're all having a good time. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, truthfully, the, the initial scope was rather – Small in the sense of we were just looking at it from, like, say, a very typical yield aggregation standpoint as, like, an MVP. Uh, and then from there, I mean, just because of how fast the community grew, we were able to get a lot of additional contributors, really, you know, to the co-op and working together. And then from there, it just branched out so many more ideas. And uh, we have amazing devs that have been able to kind of ideize a lot of interesting things that are going to be worked in. Uh, so going forward, we're definitely kind of stacked in regards to what we have planned now. It wasn't the original intention but definitely liking it a lot more now cool cool thank you it's actually crazy cool. because like as Vogue said it all started so like you know we're, we had this plan that this basic plan and it like it, it all happened overnight and and i think it's it's been amazing to see everybody come together because you know i'm sure a lot of people are discord fatigued with all these forks and all this stuff but we finally launched this spoon and and the spoon has really scooped up the whole community and all the you know the omis all ev from everywhere and every project it's been truly amazing to see people come out to come together and build this amazing community and i've always been a big proponent of like you know just because I, I guess I was so spoiled by the own community and the omis are, are it, the, the vibes are amazing. And then it was, it's been amazing really launching the server and just seeing like the rapid growth um, and, and really seeing everybody with these wag me vibes, which is what we're really running on. You know, this, this whole wag me, you know, we're all going to make it. That's really what it comes down to. Wag me. Real quick, Akron. Yes. Hey, one point I wanted to make as well to all of this talking about how quickly we've we've expanded and how much we're we're, we're exploding basically in growth. Uh, I do want to point out and, and call out a, a big thank you to all the Scrum Masters involved in this project as well. They have been instrumental in getting us to this point. And I just want the community to know that each team has a Scrum Master embedded in it as well, as well to keep the entire organization in sync. So we really have built this system for scale, and it is scaling appropriately. So I, I love what we're doing here. Yeah, and I can personally attest to that. Like, without the Scrum Masters, I feel like we would be very disorganized. There's a lot going on in the server. And so the Scrum Masters, they Perfect. organize everything, they keep us in check. I, I genuinely appreciate every Scrum Master out there. It's not an easy job. So great job, great job, everyone. Great. So um, let's see. I, I, Irene, can I say something about this community thing? Yeah, yeah. Of, of course, course. No, 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 nobody of us was expecting this. I remember the moment we all woke up and it, it went higher and higher and higher. I think everybody feels the reason why. We are attracting this with our energies. We're spreading this Vatni. We really live this Vatni. I mean, people who know me, see me on Twitter, how I walk out there and be thankful for everything, for each heartbeat. I'm thankful that I can breathe right now because nobody knows when my heart stops beating. So for me, each heartbeat is like pure life. It's magic. And I think all of us in Concave, we're expressing this. And of course, we want people to come closer to us, but we're not asking for it. It's a natural result. And growing so fast is definitely because all of you in this community are so beautiful. And then the love is just coming together. I think it's so logical. But still, it was for me also something mind-blowing. Because I woke up and every day thousands of more people. And we have seen a lot of big projects and they're growing. But what we have here, family, is unbelievable. And my smile is so big and juicy. I'm so thankful. Thanks for having me, family. Thanks for letting me also make the bike ride and spread Konke Vakmi vibes. In a few days, this will be amazing. Yeah, you have such bike has such a way for words. You you've 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 stated it perfectly. Thank you. Great. So, oh, I lo I'm loving the copy pasta in the chat. Great copy pasta. All right. So, next question. Um, let's see. So I think this this question sort of overlaps. I think this question sort of overlaps with what we already talked about. <clears throat> but Mayor BNL asks, could you please share how the different roles will correspond to whitelist bots, particularly for roles such as policy, which takes more effort to achieve compared to buying an NFT for a guaranteed spot? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, each role serves ultimately as a recognition of your proof of work towards the concave community. Uh, and when each role, the allocation available to you increases within that, that whitelist opportunity, uh, you know, should you desire it, right? At the end of the day, uh, it's just a matter of really creating the opportunity for everybody uh, within the community, giving them the option, you know, if should they choose to be engaged, to contribute back, make some friends, and kind of just vibe, you know, literally just vibing. Uh, we, 
this really stems from the fact that we only want people involved in the community who share in the vision and they want to see it thrive. Uh, I kind of touched on it before that the worst possible outcome for us is if a lot of people just came in here, ultimately only seeking it as a whitelist opportunity. I know a lot of people still are going to be in that kind of like mindset, but I'm hoping as we progress as a community that it really kind of shifts people's minds into the idea of really, you know, self-organization, working together and, you know, just making it as a, as a way together because of that. It really is the, the case that, you know, we're all stronger together. That's kind of the spirit of, of Olympus. And uh, as I keep kind of touching back to kind of the Bretton Woods 2.0 framework, we're, we're better off cooperating and collaborating. You know, that's really what this space needs. Uh, if you kind of view it in regards to what Olympus did at the protocol level for end users with, with the game theoretics of 3.3, our main goal is we want to create a 3.3 at the ecosystem level. Great. Great. Thank you so much for the great response, folk. Um, great. So anyone else want to chime in? Okay. I do want to touch to just uh, like for clarification as well regarding like uh, the specific point about policy. Uh, I think policy is a good example of the roles that people strive for being a very difficult one because it has a, a very large impact on the project overall. Uh, because a lot of what we're going to be doing relies on evaluating policy between other protocols, evaluating our internal policy from a risk management, treasury management perspective. So definitely people that are within you know the policy team you you basically get directly onboarded into the the cooperative to to work very closely on you know the community and you're you're effectively a steward of the entire project at that point so much love to everybody that got into the policy team bunch of amazing individuals really appreciate it having you guys with us yeah yeah our policy team is based like the, the remember I still remember the whole the whole um, research on Ohm Forks, I was so amazed on what, on what the policy team came up. So great job on that. Great. So, oh, this is a good question. So, Kennedy Sneak Hunt asks, I mean, and Honey Dow asks, what is the exact meaning of co op instead of DAO? A new type of community building and working? Oh, okay, okay. This, this one would be cool because I think. A lot of people kind of view a DAO as really just being like a more flexible corporate structure, really, right? So it's a lot more focused on the hierarchy. Uh, and, you know, that flexibility really comes down to it's kind of open-ended for contributing, right? People kind of drop in and out as they please. Uh, the cooperative kind of still mirrors that. But what I think a lot of people are not really realizing is that the DAO is effectively a co-op, but too much focus on like that hierarchical structure where I think too many people aren't kind of given the opportunity to voice their feedback, right? Like one thing I've noticed is that a lot of DAO governance is very limited, right? There's not a very high participation rate. And when it comes to a cooperative, uh, each member in the co-op, you know, has an equal voice in what the trajectory actually is, right? So the one thing that we see being very important as this is ultimately, we're trying to make it as community led as, po as uh, possible, is that we want as much feedback as possible from everybody at any given moment, no matter what we do. And so that's really how I kind of, view the main distinction between a co-op and a DAO within this space. Great, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I just want to add, I really like the ideology because I think this is a structure that will maximize the output for the, uh, for the project and maximize your potential for the individuals. And I hope you are, you guys are already seeing it with what we're doing, you know, with all the infrastructures we're laying out in the policy land and also all the shout out to my Chinese mods what they're doing in the Chinese OP community, trying to, you know, make this a equal opportunity, um, you know, open the channels to everyone and to maximize your potential. Hope hope uh, you guys already seen the direction we're going with it. Yeah, and one word that came up early in the server was co cooperation, uh, co co right? We want to work together to make Concave the best that it can be. So I feel like co uh, re branding ourselves as a co-op is also beneficial to that. Great. So let's see. Oh, here's a good one. Oh, does anyone have a, does, does anyone else want to talk? Or okay. yeah, I think on uh, on the note about talking about co-op, you know, it, I think it's also been you know besides the changes that we've been trying to implement, like from an actual communication standpoint where we're working together with everybody, we've also been trying to stray away from all these like normal you know terms and, and and DAOs like i feel like DAOs now unfortunately like in forks you know, right <laughs> like everything's on, on this own basis right like you have all these forks you know we're not a fork we're a spoon you know we're not a DAO, we're a 
we're a co-op you know and it's really a, a play on words but truly it, it means a lot where we're trying to implement the these the way that certain things operate and really building together both with our community with our contributors and in partners and just really having this collaborative effort throughout you know and that's really where it comes down to and then just making sure that everyone's in sync and so as as it, we're optimizing and building this 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 amazing vehicle that we're on uh, you know we're building it, it it's been great to have this co-op really be in sync as our chief psyops uh officer epic titties is always trying to get everyone in sync and it's been truly amazing to see it <laughs> thank you thank you but yes um Actually, yeah, you bring up a really great point, and this directly leads into our next our next question. So this is great. So this is a, this is a bit of a wordy question. So Nancy Pickham Pelosi asks, with the sheer excitement and anticipation around this project, we are destined to see concave forks. With some, with some core members of rug pull projects already discussing future plans of forking concave, this is of concern. I believe these rug pulls not only negatively impact DeFi 2.0, but also Concave individually along with its community. Do we have plans to combat this moving forward? Uh, yeah. Do we have plans to combat this moving forward? Oh, this was the question where, uh, okay, so I hope they're actually here right now because we would love to be able to bring them on the stage and actually kind of discuss it with them. Yeah. Uh, I know they mentioned within it that they had they had some uh, some interesting ideas behind it. Yeah. So. Are they actually here? That would be pretty yeah. great. Nancy Pick and Pelosi. Yeah. I, mean, I, I just I, want to I, say, I, great, great Discord ID. Great Discord ID. Yeah. But um, Nancy Pick and Pelosi also says, if not, I would love to work with your team as I have some great ideas in mind. So if Nancy Pick and Pelosi is here, we could talk about it. I've opened up your request. In the case you are out there in the audience, go ahead and request, uh, and then we'll bring you up if you are. If not, we can just move along. Yeah, answer I'll, the I'll answer the question. Just answer then. the question, really, is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I'll answer it. If they, if they show up, that'd be great. I'd love to get a dialogue back for it, but, yeah, we don't want to get stuck on this one thing. So uh, I think one of the best things going forward is that we can kind of continue to maintain our edge over any fork of us just because – at the end of the day, we're we're a, a collection of builders, right? So like our main goal is to is to constantly be producing product lines that are using Ohm, driving value back to Ohm, right? And so that that degree of innovation and that flexibility we have, where we I think many people maybe kind of can view it as a negative, where you're not you know hyper focused on one specific product offering, but in this space, I, I really view it as a as a positive, right? Because you have a lot more ability to drive value in many ways, drive it back to your community, and also kind of prevent what is really one of the main drawbacks of open source is that that high likelihood of, of being forked, right? Uh, I really think that's only an issue if you're offering one thing. You know, it gets a lot more complex and harder to manage if there's a lot of different layers to your overall project or protocol. And then another interesting thing is that this is kind of what's always been said about about Olympus itself in despite of all the different forks of it is that you can't really fork community, right? It's very hard to build a strong foundation of a community that's going to stick through with your protocol and support it. I mean, ultimately, no matter what you build is nothing without a community behind it, right? And that's why we're ultimately seeking to be as engaged and responsive to the to the community's feedback as possible. And we truly do believe that, you know, there's a lot of amazing talent in our community already. That's what we've seen. And, I mean, going forward, that's where the main kind of value offer is, right, is kind of being able to, to collaborate at that level with our community. Great. Well said. Uh, yeah. yeah, well said, well said. And I, I want to just, I want to add one point. Basically, I want to just ask a question, right? I think, you know, uh, you can, I think this is a great point. You can't fork, like you can fork anything, but you can't fork the community. So I'll ask you to think about that question to yourself. Ask yourself, right? You've been here for a while. What's the different feel? What's the different vibe you're getting from here? And that's the, that's the true question in your heart. That's the true answer in your heart. Beautifully said, beautifully said. What are we without our community? They can fork, they can fork us, but they can't fork our community. Yeah, you know that's one of those one of those things that you know with Olympus when you saw Olympus really uh, driving to be like a top protocol and really being so active and having an amazing communities that as many forks as they tried to get, you know, and you had a lot of you know people chasing APYs, but at the end of the day, the Ohm community was was amazing, right? And you're able to fork Ohm, but not really fork the community because the Omis were just amazing and and then just the the, the amount of three threeing throughout the you know throughout the spaces was just 
great. You know, you, you can never really accomplish that with these forks that were just doing it with ill intent. And so I guess it, it'll, it'll turn out to be the the same thing. And then this is this is why we've been so you know supportive towards the community and having this this uh, collaboration with the building this project with the community and really having them involved so that it's their baby as well and it's not just ours it's not just someone else's it, it's 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 everybody's project reality is what it comes down to right? and that's why we are a cop you know a co-op and we are always in sync great great we are always in sync beautiful so we have a few questions left so bomb c asks did the own forks we know um have the own forks of which king concave is supposed to be the synthesis of have they been contacted by the core team and agree with the global project. Ooh, okay, so this is cool. Yeah, this is a good one. Uh, because at the end of the day, we are truly really trying to bring kind of the vision of Bretton Woods 2.0, as detailed by Zeus, together within the the Ohm ecosystem. And what was cool is that as we kind of first started, a lot of people were starting to put together the pieces of the puzzle, and this led to a lot of these different protocols, right? These Ohm forks reaching out already, looking to collaborate. So I thought that was really cool. That before we even really got fully operational. Uh, one of the the main missions we have is is already kind of getting, uh, you know, focused on right, and and we're already getting direct feedback and and these other projects reaching out to us. Uh, so definitely looking forward to working with you know along the lines of like Redacted and uh, many others within the space. Great, great. Does anyone have anything else to add, or should I move on to my last question? Oh, just to just to point out too, what I thought was really funny was uh, Hector Dow already trying to oh. kind of copy the spoon moniker. Oh my gosh, they're, they're <laughs> bad. Still got notifications with them. Great. So, last question, guys. Last question. We are up to four hundred sixty-two people. That's amazing. Can we get up to five hundred people before the AMA ends? Let's try. Let's let, let's pump it up, guys. Let's pump well, up the numbers. The amazing thing is that we have this many viewers here, and then like these viewers. And listeners are actually in the community, so they made it to the to the actual server. As everybody knows, it's <laughs> it's been hard to join the server, you know. Uh, and then yeah. we have, you know, we're streaming on Twitch and YouTube, and we actually have, you know, like 87 viewers here, 80, uh, you know, 90 viewers on the other. Uh, so it's actually oh, wow. amazing to see that we have 500 here listening in, uh, and they've truly been able to actually make it to the server and, and get in sync. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, and if you're listening here right now, wag me. If you're listening here, we're gonna make it. Great. So our last question is from Taxel, and he asks, with the increasing sophistication of DeFi broadly, the curve, for, the curve wars, what Redacted is up to, will Concave move into ecosystems apart from Ohm? Yeah, so first off, we think uh, a lot of people are very focused on the curve wars. There's already a lot of participants in it. Ultimately, with the trajectory we see happening in regards to Olympus and kind of the broadening of it as a, as a DeFi reserve currency, and it being able to really kind of have deep liquidity deployed as many chains as possible. That's our main focus. Uh, so we really view it as like the Ohm Wars have long begun and not enough people are focusing on them. Uh, so between Lobis, Redacted and all them, like the Curve Wars are, are very solidified in their participants. And Olympus already has champions for them within the Curve Wars. So our main thing is we want to be the champion for Olympus within the Ohm Wars. Great, great. And then speaking to some of the like integrations along the lines uh, to kind of help strengthen our objective and ultimately what we want to accomplish, you know, there's a lot of different DeFi protocols out there from a governance perspective that are going to aid in this undertaking, right? And so just a, a few examples being like Wi-Fi, Toke, Frax. These are all things that you can kind of synergize together in a governance perspective within the broader DeFi ecosystem to help achieve, uh, you know, that propagation and utilization of Olympus. Great. Great. Actually, actually, we have one more question. Sorry about that. We actually have one more question. Okay, so now this is our official last question. This is our official last question. Uh, Yura DMT asks, where do you see Concave in the multi-chain world of the future? Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah, this is a cool one. So basically, the, the TLDR of it would be, I view Concave as the arbiter of liquidity and the enabler of frictionless value transfer between different chains throughout the DeFi ecosystem as we go forward. A lot of this has, you know, basically the underpinnings of Olympus as it broadens out, as they're going cross-chain. Uh, we're able to be cross-chain, you know, right from launch, uh, specifically for EVM compatible. And then going forward from there, 
a lot of the other non-natives in regards to like Solana are all going to be accomplished. Great. All right. Uh, those are all of the, those are all of our questions. I mean, do we want to answer? I think we have some others. And if we have time, yeah. there's, there were some other ones uh, we can touch on too that had some votes, but not as many as these ones that we focused on. Okay. Yeah. We have, honestly, we have a lot of questions. So would you be willing to answer like some of the questions that we weren't? Yeah, but most definitely. Definitely great. want to keep keep answering. Great, great. Well, the alpha the alpha continues, guys. The alpha continues. All right. So Badger Paws asks, and this is the second most upvoted one from Supermods Philosopher and Philosophy. Badger Paws asks, You have done a fairly world class job of growing and mold motivating a community pre launch. <clears throat> For many people, initially at least, the motivation was to achieve a whitelist spot. With little information as to exactly what they were striving for, people had their own projections to shoot towards, and this proved to be incredibly motivating. Do you have cunning plans to further gamify the project and maintain community motivation once the whitelist cut is complete, and the pro uh, will, the pro will the projections become reality? Yeah, so when, when Zeus started Olympus, he introduced a brand new concept to DeFi and uh, the crypto space as a whole, uh, and we can... We kind of at least essentially view this concept as proof of bond, right? Uh, but what if proof of bond went beyond just financial means, right? Can we apply proof of bond to our community and uh, and the culture that we're really trying to foster here, right? And so from there now, we can say, you know, is it is it actually achievable to have people from all over the world connect and form bonds with one another, enjoying their time together in the activities we have planned? Uh, and that kind of ties into kind of building out an entire metaverse around the project as like, another insulating layer beyond just like the DeFi aspects, right? And that's why we believe that answer is yes. You know, we will be rolling out events uh, all, of all sorts, right? Across different kind of interactions between the community, whether it be within the crypto space specifically or ones that are kind of more fun and lighthearted in regards to like, say, the karaoke nights or, or game nights. Uh, and so that's kind of our main way we, we view as sustaining and growing the culture, as well as maintaining the community engagement and morale while, you know, the protocol does this thing as churning out uh, a lot of products and a lot of nice sweet yield for our wonderful cooperative members. Uh, and so we hope that the kind of the everlasting friendships that people forge here in Concave are ones that kind of blossom into future opportunities for each and every co-op member there. Uh, one thing that we thought was pretty cool is that really what we're trying to stoke here is exactly what happened in Olympus Dow when we were all contributing together is that it gave us the opportunity to meet wonderful people, work together, and then, you know, be able to build together. So what I thought was really cool, too, is that on one of the first kind of self-organization tasks that popped up, we really got a glimpse into the power of the community where, you know, so many people that never worked together whatsoever just kind of immediately built these NFT projects, <laughs> you know, and they did it at a lightning speed. And they were able to, you know, not only drive value to themselves, but to the community as a whole. So I thought that was really cool. And that's something we want to definitely keep kind of having as we go forward. Uh, we want to, you know, be able to support our community in whatever they want to do. So. If there's any cool ideas you have, if you need any support, come on down to the the incubator, basically. Let's work together. Yeah, definitely. And and That's from good. the core team, like I said, I'm a big fan. You know, I, I don't know if any of you know me, remember me from, uh, from Olympus. You know, I was really helping out with a lot of community engagement in there because I just love building on communities and, and doing these events. Like for myself, I mean, we have an amazing community team that's really, you know, putting in like this whole AMA. It was amazing to see what the team really came up with and, and created this whole plan. But, you know, just from the core team itself, we have so many ideas. You know, we really want to gamify Gathertown. I've already built a, a Gathertown community uh, space, actually. You know, and we've really been trying to engage with the community in like Minecraft. We've done so many things to really get the community engaged and, and actually give them this this space, like as Vogue said, that you can find friends and really connect with people and share, you know, you know, share experiences, which is what we've done from the beginning is really try to build this community that feels like they have a purpose and and really probing for more, uh, you know, interactions and 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 building a better community really is what it comes down to. And we have a lot planned to besides the project right and we see it as like as one because it is concave all together but we i see personally the community like the major you know uh, pillar for any project and then that's like one of my main focuses is once we get the operations running we get the full you know development cycle going and all that ready to go really you know i, I want to dedicate myself 100 percent to doing community stuff and really engaging with the community and doing you know karaoke nights like that's amazing you know i want to start doing my live meme sessions probably starting next week on mondays at 10 a.m 
on our server Send it. streaming it so there's a lot of stuff we want to do same thing with like community created content i don't know if anybody tuned into the uh community intermission yesterday we you know we were sharing some videos from the community that they created and it's been amazing to see the community what they've come together to do you have a lot of songs yeah. a lot of music the memes i mean concave is like it's pure memes right because this mimetic expression is just taking this high road that everybody just loves it and it really instills this wag me vibe and and that's the type of things that we're trying to to really instill to our community and and make sure that we're all working together and and just having fun right and making new friends yeah kind of, yeah kind of piggyback on that idea just really quick so to kind of bring the community together bringing the team together bringing everyone together in that whole three three mentality I mean, let, let's all be real. You know, if you look out your window, the world's getting pretty crazy out there. But we're finding that people are, are consciously waking up and resonating together and finding each other together. Communities like this are forming so organically and so beautifully. And, and I just feel like we're all kind of compelled to be here to build the future. You know, don't worry about fighting the past. Build something beautiful for the future. And that's what we're here to do. Yep, we all, yeah, we're all here to build something great. Yeah, uh... Yeah, and from my perspective, exactly. Uh, from my perspective, I think, you know, what keeps the community together is number one, the fun, the fun, the vibe, right? We talk about it. And the other part, you know, as we we'll touched a little bit, doing meaningful work together, meaningful, impactful work together. I mean, we already see the proof of that, right? Proof of bonding, proof of bonding together for meaningful work. In different aspects of the community from uh, what I see from the policy land, super impressed super impressed so going forward right i want to you know speak a little bit about uh the meaningful work perspective um i think you know this is barely a, like i see a lot of people collaborating producing like you know uh great researchers from the policy land but this is just barely the starting point um like what we're going to do differently from other sort of protocol styles it would be will give you the sense will not only give you the sense of you know sense of fun sense of belonging but more impact uh, more importantly you will feel the sense of impact your sense of ownership to how this project is going to be going forward and that's what you know i think that's what truly de at least from the policy perspective that's what uh will be truly differentiating uh truly differentiating us beautifully said and Personally speaking, as community lead, I, I am humbled to be among you all. Like, you are you. Every one of you in this in this in this channel right now, every one of you in the server, is amazing. You've done amazing work. I always feel inspired to do more with you, to do more with y'all because it's amazing. What 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 we have come up with is amazing, and I genuinely appreciate appreciate all of you. Great. So. Red alert, red alert, Nancy Pickham Pelosi is in is in the voice channel. Hey hey, how's it going? Hello, Nancy. Hi. Nice to be able to see you today. Glad you're able to make um, it. Um great AMA. You guys are doing a fantastic job answering the relevant questions, so I appreciate it. Um to kind of touch on what I was what I what my question was around. Um obviously Concave is built around the community and one of the things that I feel we need to do a little bit better in this space is protect the community. Um, obviously, there's rug pulls happening every day. Um, lots of lots of people that are getting in, new getting into DeFi are falling for these sort of scams. And I think that there's definitely some ways around it. And with with how popular Concave is already, it's only going to become more popular in the future. And there's bound to be forks down the road. So I do have a couple suggestions on how we can kind of keep those keep those uh, rug pulls from forking concave. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are in the Olympians Discord, but what they're doing is pretty great. They have a spreadsheet of upcoming forks, own forks, and their legitimacy. And they kind of have low risk, medium risk, high risk. Now the issue with this is I think they only have one or two people working on this document. And on this document, you know, it's not very up to date. Sometimes they're launched and they still say that they haven't launched. They haven't updated it with current rug pulls. And I think this is a great opportunity that we can expand on and be more active with, especially allowing, you know, some of our community and creating a team to kind of combat these rug pull forks. Um, and by kind of working with these forks, I think that we can create kind of a safety 
safety net to keep these guys from from trying to rug us and our community. Um, another thing, Assure yeah. Finance, so Assure DeFi, and they provide private identity verification, KYC, for different projects. And, you know, they've found a way to have, to make profit off of assuring that these are not rug pulls. Just doing KYCs and going over the code before launch and before whitelisting. And I feel like, you know, they're finding a way to make this profitable, but also protect the community. And I feel like we have the opportunity to maybe do something similar to this, make profit from it, but also protect our community and protect the people that are involved in Concave while also growing the name of Concave, getting our name further out there by being, you know, a KYC project that kind of protects the entire community of Forks. That that's a that's amazing thoughts. May I, you know, before I, I don't want to sorry for interrupting, I just want to quickly sort of engage on this point because it's so good. And just want to mention that just to your point, a lot of the one of the greatest, you know, work that community has been putting to, so far is a very comprehensive, well thought checklist for how to avoid rock. I don't know if you have sort of engaged with that, maybe share your wisdom there. And also not only that, right? That's only the first step. We're trying to quantify. Like there's no like it's not a bi nothing is binary here. What the policy work team currently is doing is trying to quantify that metric on a forward looking basis. So that not only when we are making decisions for our treasuries, we're aware we're avoiding that terrorism of getting rocked. Right. I don't want to call it we don't want to make a profit out of it. Maybe we want to sell it, right? That's for the community to decide. And then, you know, for us, it's alpha. And then all of this, right, will be decided, worked by the community, make published to the community. So other than the meaningful impact, the education you got from getting involved in the process will be to me invaluable to everyone here for their future development. So definitely, you know, a good uh, suggestion, and this is something we already pursuing thoroughly, robustly uh, at, in the policy land. Beautiful, beautiful. Awesome. I'm glad to be amongst you all. Yeah, I'm Great. thinking maybe this could be a good opportunity if if, uh, if Nancy wants to get involved at the policy level as well, kind of collaborate in regards to this this framework, you know? That would definitely yes, be Yes, really I cool. definitely do. And I kind of have a plan to kind of put together a document with a couple others that I've been discussing this with. Um, yeah, yeah. Just kind of outlining are... some thoughts. And... Yeah, we already have a... Yeah, we already have a sort of, I don't know, you should go to, I think there is a rock analysis threat in the policy channel. Maybe you should go there and maybe, you know, I, I, I was, I was keeping close track, but I don't know who's owning that particular piece. Definitely welcome, join us and then we can make, maybe help us make it better for the community. Perfect. Sounds yeah, definitely, good. Thank you definitely guys. Sync, sync up with Meowshi uh, after the AMA. Would love to be able to work with you, you know, in this regards. Uh, you know, as you put it, right, the, the main thing, or really the most important thing out there for us is protecting our community, right? So, for sure. definitely looking forward to working, you know, together on this one. Awesome. Great, great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy, for, for, for providing us with such engaging conversation. Great. So, I think we have time for one more question, and then and then we could close out the AMA. Okay, so... Oh, uh, w y Lin D asks Ohm and its forks flourish when the market was bullish, but when the bar but, the, but when their bear market sets in, they seem to lose their luster very fast. Some even fell fell to their back token pricing and below. Is there any way to ensure that Concave can thrive in a bullish market and yet still persevere in a bear one? Uh, I can give a. I, I can. Yeah, this okay. is this is Meowshi territory. Get ready. Here we uh, go. I, I, can, I can. This is a very good question. Right? I'm glad. I'm. I'm glad we're all thinking about this because, especially observing the market. Uh, where should I? Where should I start? I think I want to start with the mission level, right? We don't want to be a. For, we want to be a positive force, right? We want to help. You know, we want to help Ohm to achieve his ultimate. Uh, ultimate goal we want to help we want to be the force you know ensuring the success of the entire own ecosystem let alone DeFi ecosystem we not only want to be a force we want to be a fucking sustainable force right we want to be here for the longevity a lot of you know this is exactly the reason that i think i was sort of you know I, this is i think 90 percent of the reason why i'm here because you know we want to be a sustain like uh like want to be, be be here for the long haul 
That means we need to survive. Like this is not even a bear market, please. Like this is like child play. This is chill volatility. Like in my framework, you guys would talk about there's big vol, right? Capitalized VOL. There's you know normal VOL. This is normal VOL, normal volatility. We're not even in the two Z zone. Like oh, well, probably two Z now. But like when we talk about vol, we talk about A Z because you know market is the the risk. Uh, it's like nothing is normally distributed, right? If the tail is too perfect, like this is not bear market to me. We want to survive 10, 10 times, 100 times, times worse, worse than this. This, and this is my goal, right? Like we'll be placing risk levers, right? Some uh, like, you know, all the sort of, you know, strategies, different sort of strategies, for example, dollar the neutral strategies, right? To ensure that once the real bear market happens, once our boy Jay Powell pulls the rug in front of all of us, we can survive. We'll be the one who not only th survive, but thrive to take take on all those good opportunities. And who's going to pull the risk lever in? It's not Miaoshi, because Miaoshi only do the talks. It's you guys, right? We'll be, we're will be we already having discussions. I think, you know, uh, one of the fearless leader in uh, in the policy team, Marcellus, is already putting out, putting down a lot of research. As I see uh, uh, my friend Igor doing some good research there, like giving us thoughts. You know, it's not me. It's a community. We're gonna together put the levers in so that when the real buyer market happens, this is child play, right? When the real buyer market happens, we'll be the one who's standing, standing strong and gonna strive in the future, capture the opportunities, right? I actually, you know, I, I talk to Vogue every day. Like I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to that to happen so that this is the real chance for us to shine. Beautiful. That was an absolute mic drop. Anyone else have anything? Yeah, to thank you, thank you very much, very much. Beautiful. And I will personally say it's it's like an honor to work to work with, to work with y'all. Like Miyoshi drops alpha to left and right. Not yet. He's Not also yet. he's also uh, our carry. He's the hard carry. I just hard support him. Uh, yeah, that, hard please, carry. I, I, this is like <laughs> we don't want to go there. We got. A carry that can't win a game is not a carry. Well, actually, I, I do a lot of work in policy, but boom, oh, you know, we are. Uh, we I told you, I them. told you, you have real worry, bro. Real worry. A, a true carry can win the game. That's why it matters. Yeah. True. We gotta, we gotta get very yeah. oh, Great. Um, yeah. I think I think I think our time is I think we're on time. So just really quickly, thank you everyone. On, this, Akron, there's gotta be something we can do a couple more, right? Oh, you wanna do a couple more? Yeah, of course. We can do a couple. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty forget, sure there's some left. Forget the time box, man. We're not scrumming. We can go over the time box. <laughs> let's, give the, <laughs> let's give the community what they want. Let's give the community what this they is want. Community is very happy happy the hand. Yeah. Right. I'll let it happen this time, gentlemen. Keep, keep the vibes going. <laughs> let the vibes flow. I, I love it. Keep the vibes going then. I mean, I'm having fun, so I, I'm definitely down to keep, to keep going. All right. Yeah, okay, so... Well, somebody yeah. mentioned real quick, they mentioned NFT utility. Just know all NFTs have a have a shared place within the metaverse. All NFTs have a place in the shared universe. Alpha. While okay. We, while Great. we do do this, I, I'd like to ask everyone listening. I mean, we have about 500... How much do we have? 468 users still? I want to... I've been trying to... You know, I've been experimenting, like I said, about gamifying our engagement with the community. And I've actually, I've actually created a uh, gather town space for the community. Uh, we have right now about like 18, 17 users in the gather space. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tag everyone again. Uh, it would be really nice to see everyone just join in. There's some people playing actually some poker. Uh, but jump on over there and just kind of explore what we got going on. And, and like I said, this is... This is what we're hoping to do and really expand the gamification of the community, being able to build and play games and, and just have chats and have, you know, all these type of engagements in this metaverse uh, style. Yeah, the town hangout after the AMA. See me there. Great. So um, I'm not sure if, if you are able to answer this, but AMA asks, is the launch date already established? Uh, will Concave launch on a single chain with plans to expand multi-chain? Or will Concave directly launch on multi-chains? He has more questions, but let's just... Wait. Oh, no, yeah, this is a big one. This, this is one I wanted to make sure we, we hit on. That's exactly why we're trying to answer all the questions. So, the, question. the launch date is known, but it's within a range, right? Because we have a lot of new contracts, and we, we kind of rebuffed a lot of old contracts as well. We are unfortunately at the behest of auditing in that framework. So Q1 
is is our range. That that's where we're where we're at right now. Hopefully they actually finish a lot sooner. Uh, some you know one thing we were thinking about doing as well is kind of like a staggered launch in regards to focusing on on kind of like the MVP contract specifically that can get out a lot quicker. So we we have you know a launch that's really more amenable to our community, right? Because we don't want to at the same time we don't want to rush things, but we don't want to be too behind the curve, right? So that's one thing we're looking at there, uh, timeline wise. Uh, in regards to the multi-chain aspect, uh, we kind of streamlined everything where it's very easy for us to launch direct to all EVM compatible chains. So that will be happening. Uh, and we're looking forward to that too, because I mean, multi-chain is the future. Uh, being able to operate within those spaces, or I mean, that's really the only way you can make it uh, as we go forward, especially just because uh, mainnet has a lot of scaling issues, right? I'm sure we're all not a big fan of... Uh, the, the $400 transaction costs that kind of come our way every now and then. Yep. Other than that, let's see, what were the other parts of the question as well? Okay, so... Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Akron. Okay, so does Concave have direct contact? Does it actively cooperate with Olympus? Could you leak some more details in regard to Concave mechanics? How does Concave plan to bring the capital deployed on own forks back to the mother base? Gotcha, gotcha. So in regards to Olympus, we, we have direct contact with them uh, within the Olympus DAO server. It's set up in a way that because, uh, you know, we, we, we will be hard coding from our bond sales, a uh, 3.3% revenue share directly back to the Olympus treasury. And then from there, we're also, uh, because we're going to be getting a lot of OM as well, we have to have that kind of like window of contact open just in case we can ever streamline things in that regard, whether it be, you know, OTC or any of the likes of that. Uh, and also, I mean, going forward, we would love to be able to kind of directly integrate more of what we build to Ohm as well, kind of share that. So that would be really cool. Uh, but yeah, we do. We have the line there. You know, we're we're all very early Omies, and we're all, you know, contributors, some still contributing. So we're definitely intertwined to the Olympus ecosystem for sure. Uh, it's what we love. We love that community. We want to keep building it up. It really is a primitive. It's awesome. Great. Now, the great. next part. Some more details into the concave mechanics. Awesome. Okay, I think I actually have some notes directly about this one. Right, okay, so concave mechanics, they're, they're really more dependent upon what specific product line we're discussing at any given time. Uh, so some of the ones I can discuss now are kind of a lot more higher degrees of bond composability. Uh, so that's for user-specified vesting schedules and the multiplier rewards that go along with them. Uh, another big thing that we were able to accomplish was at least specifically for mainnet, uh, gas optimizing all the contracts. So a lot of people aren't going to be priced out. Uh, another big thing we're working on is interest-free loans and self-repaying loans, uh, an internal treasury allocator for lending and borrowing, the Olympus Eco Index, but that kind of goes through a filter of really matching the aligned forks within the Olympus ecosystem. So that's really where it gets into kind of the whole Bretton Woods 2.0, where every single fork that aligns towards Olympus, you benefit from a very powerful double entry accounting system where, you know, say Fork A takes in 1 million die. If they go ahead and take that 1 million die as their reserve asset and bond for more Ohm, we kind of get that very powerful double entry where now Ohm has 1 million die. It, it rebuffs the Olympus ecosystem. And now the Fork A, which is now backed by Ohm as well, is rebuffed. And so you can, very, you can make a very powerful flywheel effect through the entire Olympus ecosystem as you align all these forks. Uh, another component is really looking at uh, on the line forks now in regards to multi-chain yield aggregation where you can kind of capture this EV, bring it back to mainnet, bomb for more ohm, and further strengthen your aligned ohm ecosystem as well now with this. So this is where we kind of can view it between the two main features is that the aligned ohm ecosystem becomes a, a yield normalization layer, as we like to call it. Uh, so we're kind of just strengthening that entire omniverse, if you will. And then the ones that are unaligned, we're exerting the the worst outcome for the protocol in a sustainable manner for us to capture that EV to still have another avenue of bringing back value to mainnet. Uh, and so as all these other forks under the Bretton Woods 2.0 system align towards Ohm, all value that we can bring back to Ohm is further rebuffing all of the aligned forks. And so it gets very synergistic. It's really cool. Bless up to Zeus for, for tweeting about Bretton Woods 2.0. <laughs> I mean, that sounds really cool to me. I, I'm sure it sounds very co cool to everyone listening right now, too. <clears throat> yeah, and then um, I think the other aspect, too, was uh, looking in regards to that, that capital deployed back from the own forks, right? 
as I touched upon the aligned or unaligned aspect, that really determines exactly what type of approach we take, right? So you can kind of view it as, you know, ones that are aligned, you know, they, they broadcast very clear market signals if they're aligned, right? Are they accepting geom? Uh, are they hard coding any type of revenue share? You know, are they already a sub DAO within Olympus? Did they put up any type of proposal to get aligned? Did they even just reach out? You know, as we kind of touched on before, what was cool is that a lot of ones reached out to us directly, you know, looking for collaboration. So I think it's going to be really cool to be able to build together. Ultimately, uh, as we know, the power of 3.3 at the protocol level is super strong. So our main goal, make it ecosystem wide. Nice, nice. Great. So Epictetes, or Epictetus, spoke of two different whitelists. Oh, actually, um, our time asks, sorry. Our time asks, Epictetus spoke of two different whitelists, a whitelist and angel list. Is it possible to specify the differences between the two? Yeah, the, the whitelist is the community, and the angel list is really anybody that reached out to us, right? When we posted that, uh, that kind of meme fun yeah, broadcast meme fun. on Twitter. Uh, that's really us looking at bringing in you know, partners, right? Anybody was able to, to reach out in that regard. Uh, and the main thing there is, you know, really kind of seeing who shares our vision, right? And, and filtering through that because those are the people that really, you know, when we get to share that with them, you know, they really vibe with it, right? What I thought was really cool is a lot of those people, when they came in, they were like, oh, this is just an investment opportunity. They came in, we talked to them, they go, forget the investment opportunity. Let me get engaged at the, at the co-op level. You know, let me get involved yeah. contributing ASAP. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, and on that, I mean, like I like you know, I said earlier, it's it's really it's about this co-op, right? Where we're really working together, and then from the get-go, we've really discussed and tried to instill this this effort of collaboration, uh, starting with the community uh, partners and our own contributors, like I said, and it's really about just you know having these individuals that share the vision, as Vogue said. Once we really started to, you know, tell them, hey, this is what we're trying to do. We're just trying to bring it back to Ohm. Like, this is the way. This is what we're trying to do. We're tr we're truly trying to be a spoon. And uh, everybody that shared that vision, it's been amazing to really, like, you know, we engaged with mean funds and, and angels uh, from, an, you know, investor assets. But once they really joined, it wasn't even about the investment. It was really about to get about getting them on board and just making sure that they share the vision and, and collaborating with them. You know, and we've met with a lot of individuals and it's been truly amazing to to get the support and, and hear the support from everyone and, and just, you know, giving the community a pat on the back for the amazing uh, community that we've created and then the culture and, you know, all the engagement. And, and what was even more fulfilling was actually finding out that a lot of these individuals that joined up uh, that wanted to partner with us were, were, were truly, were truly uh, conca concave dwellers, right? Like they actually went through the caves. They were playing the RPG. They were gaining their roles. And I think that was, that's what was most amazing is that these individuals not only shared the vision, but they were able to actually play this game that we've created, in, uh, this RPG game that we've created on Discord, and it's been really, really amazing. Great, great. Now, we actually have we actually have a question in the chat that I think is a really good question. So it's from Desolate Storm, and he asks, "Do we have in do we have mechanics in place to avoid whitelist dumpers?" Ooh, I would say. I mean, our main mechanic for that. I mean, ultimately. Just because of the way the market operates, if somebody decides they ever can sell because it's an open system, you know, they're able to. But our main way of getting past whitelist numbers is kind of that proof of work layer, right? Making it very hard for people to actually get whitelist because they need to truly be involved and engaged with the community. Yeah, yeah, great. Great. So this is a good one. Um, 99 Donuts 99, shout out to my man Donuts, asks, are there any VC angel investors right now? So there's a big list we're waddling through. Uh, no one is solidified yet, but they are important in regards to the bootstrapping. Uh, one thing that I want to you know, stress as well is that I've been meeting with a lot of them talking, seeing that they could actually contribute back to the community because the worst thing possible for us is if we let somebody in, get involved that really just wants to like basically allocate capital and they walk away. Right? That would be the worst outcome. That does a, a complete disservice to the community and the project as a whole. So my, my main job is to make sure that the community is taken care of in that regard. Great. All right. So one, we have thing, a few questions. one thing I want to ask right now as we have everybody engaged, uh, and we did this in the last Linkus AMA. And by the way, if you have not listened to it, make sure you go to our YouTube and listen in. Uh, it was actually pretty amazing to see the community come up and, and you know talk their theories and really engage. Um, but make sure you subscribe to our YouTube, uh, you know our Twitch and all these channels. Uh, but what I really want to do is I want to start a thread like we did uh, 
you know <laughs> how we did on the last aim is on, on reddit you know we are on reddit i've already created a post over at the concave reddit let's go ahead and just just spread the wagmi vibes you know share some comments and let's let's make sure we get some new subs we're currently at about like 843 members let's see if we can get it up to a thousand by the end of the week that'd be truly amazing to see yep just follow the reddit live hosted events for sure uh yeah. vesting will be will be dropped very soon uh, in regards to all the kind of like tokenomic details and that's where we're going to get our initial feedback from the community as a whole uh, we don't want to push anything through that the community is not kind of in sync with you know so look forward to let's say i'm shooting for monday this this upcoming monday it'll all be dropped let's get some feedback going guys let's get a nice collaborative dialogue yes Doc, doc soon doc soon that's i think that's been like the most uh uh not hindering but the, the main thing that we've been working on is is really finishing up these docs and really putting the vision and and releasing all this uh key products that we're we're, we're hoping to do and really giving an explanation of what we're doing you know today was like the first like uh breaking ground and really letting the community know what what we're doing who we are and what we're trying to achieve with the community uh, but we will be releasing some docs on what we we plan on doing in written form of course and we will continue to expand on that and and make adjustments as the community seem you know deems necessary of course don't forget big big medium big medium post incoming Big medium post. A lot, a lot of what we have is it's tough to be able to communicate it effectively in just a verbal way. So definitely a lot easier to kind of write it all down, disseminate it, and then open. You know, I want to open basically like a, a a forum in regards to each medium post we do, and get the community really engaged in discussing the way forward on it. You know, kind of giving us feedback, giving us any type of tweaks they suggest, how we can make it better for the community as a whole. That is all that really matters, right? Yeah, yeah. We never want to stray away from not really, you know being part of a community itself and like you know we don't see ourselves as like you know being over anyone or, or less than anyone really it's it's about us being you know in it together and really you know allowing the community to build as we've seen you know it's been great to see like and i continue saying because i'm just so happy about it you know we've really been in sync as we progressed and everybody has come in the community to, to that the same agreement of what we're doing and really sharing the vision and it that, that's what we're trying to do here you know we're trying to really build this together as we've said well said well said so do we on that note to... actually before i say anything else since we're talking about medium make sure you also subscribe to our medium and our the echo medium as well we you know uh, akron and the echo team the the german operations team is doing an amazing job um creating this content and organizing and, and doing a lot of stuff and we will be doing a lot more uh, releases of content uh for the community you know community drafted event uh medium posts all that type of stuff so make sure you you know sync up and just make sure you follow and subscribe to all these channels that we're sharing Another important thing I want to touch on too is I know I kind of wanted to give us some time to really have a big list of questions coming in in regards to the office hours request. So I think next week too we're gonna we're gonna close that channel and start going through each request that was put in there. We want to be able to directly interact with the community that you know that put the time out there, uh, made themselves kind of open and honest towards what what they want to do, what they can offer back to the community, and kind of sync up in that regard. So definitely look forward to a office hours ama coming next week great great yep so if you if you have any feedback please let us know um let us know how you think about the ama how that how that goes great um do we good do you want to answer more questions are there, what, which ones are left are specifically because i'm good. down to just keep going i mean it's right. just yeah. it's awesome to be able to spend the weekend with the community so always yeah, happy to, I, to keep answering I always love spending time in here. So, uh, this is a good one. Uh, Magium asks, how do you ensure that there is long-term commitment from the community beyond just initial token sale? Uh, well, I think, okay, this kind of, that ties back into the whole proof of work system, proof of bond, yeah. where uh, the more we have people engaged directly with the community, the more invested they become, right? Especially if they are making friends within the community, if they're working together, collaborating on different tasks. I think that truly is what ultimately creates the, a very strong foundation to go forward from. Uh, I mean, I know I, I've been touching on it continually that a lot of people are kind of coming in here only as like a quick whitelist flip opportunity, but that's not what we're what we're shooting for. So this proof of work layer, this proof of bond layer, getting the community super engaged and self-organizing, that is our, our filter for all of this. That's how I think we build a, a truly amazing community that's going to stand the test of time. Cool. I cool. just want to quote, I forgot, I'm sorry, I forgot the Discord IDs. Some people said, do the meaningful work, got your role, and then you'll realize you have become a better person. Wow. 
Wow. Okay. That that was that was that was fucking amazing. That was amazing. That's sad. I forgot. Is uh, maybe China? Maybe I translate this China China opioid policy. Someone said that. I was like, I got it. Like, yeah. I don't know what to say, man. This is no. That makes I, sense. Why there's no and not safe for work uh, role yet. <laughs> Speaking of not safe for work, <laughs> culture, culture, the culture, man. Oh man, it's been amazing to see the culture and <laughs> stuff, organization and culture. Uh, we actually had uh, one of our oh, policy yeah. members when he first joined in. He actually made an NFT um, out of a bunch of culture pictures. I think it was like 3,000 culture pictures that were posted, <laughs> and he created this amazing NFT. We haven't really shared it out as much. We shared it in the meet in the in our first uh, newsletter, I believe. Um, but it was it's amazing to see the culture how how from the real culture has really expanded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, want, we want to be able to do something special with that. I thought that was really cool, uh, what he was able to put together for us. So yeah. that's another event that's going to be on the horizon as well. And then I see some mention of of a podcast. There, there is a podcast in the works for the community. Um, but I would also say if anybody else has interesting podcast ideas, I mean, we can kind of segment it where the, the main podcast has little subdivisions within it. If anybody in the community has different you know show ideas basically they want to do uh feel free to come forward and uh, let's set it up yeah and uh this is a great way to shout out the, our new concubator channels our new concubator channels if you have any ideas podcasts events uh any ideas about policy any any ideas about um design please head over to the concubator channels we are looking at them if you have any ideas you want to get a proposal going please have a, please share your ideas over there I see we have a, a lot of talk of the PO app. I know our, our one design lead was working on a, a really cool PO app. I'm not sure if it's actually ready yet. I wish it was for this one, but I think we should make our top priority. We got to get the PO app out to everybody here. Yep. You got to get it out. We got to get it out. Great. Uh, with that being said, right. though, uh, after AMA, make sure you join in on Gather. I'm going to go ahead and share the Gather town again. I think we can keep the party going there, and I will, I'll start up some tombs in here as well. Possibly I'll broadcast over on Gather. I think it'll be pretty cool. Um, yeah, Akron, uh, oh, yeah. Go ahead and take I'm it away, man. I'm definitely going to Town after this. See you there. We'll, we'll see you in Gather Town after this. I'm definitely coming to hang out in Gather Town. And Great. with that, you know, I want to thank the community and all the core contributors and, and everybody everybody that joined up here and, and really talked and, you know, and everybody for tuning in to really listen and, and possibly, you know, understand the vision and just share it with us further and really wanting to build this out together. Uh, you know, we truly are a co-op and that's what we want to continue pushing is is being the spoon that is cooperating and and cooperationing right <laughs> together to really grow well, something amazing. We cooperate together within, but externally it's cooperation. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I know it's still a competitive space, but we can structure it in a way where we truly do cooperate and compete with one another at the same time uh, on a protocol to protocol basis. Mm -hmm. Great, great. On that note. I mean, I guess I guess there is a good question, a very abstract question at the very end, and I think that's a good way to end it. Papan asks, "How will concave help us trans transcend reality?" Oh yeah, no, I remember this one. This one's good. Yeah, this is probably the most alpha filled question because really, at the end of the day, uh, the real transcension or transcending of reality comes down to recognizing, you know, the power that you have when you kind of get together, work together, collaborate. It's really the most effective and efficient outcome is if everyone collaborates with one another, right? Uh, competition is disastrous compared to collaboration and cooperation. Yeah, and that's what we are striving for here every day, every day. I drop. Um, so on that note, thank you all for being here. Thank, uh, please give some love for our amazing core members and community members who showed up today. The, the shout out is definitely to the community. What me? Yes, and also yourselves. Please give yourself a, a round of applause for being so. So for being so passionate, for being so kind to each other, like this community is fucking awesome. Truly blessed every day. It's just, it's been amazing. It's a, it's already off to a really really cool start. Just kind of seeing everything form, the community come together, work together, literally just vibe. I mean, everyone's literally just vibing, making friends. It's awesome. And as, oh, as we said I'm... last time, we ended all with wag me. We started with wag me, so therefore wag me. Wag me, never everyone. forget. Wag me. Wag me. Get it. Like me. Great. How much more do you want from me? More. How much more successful do you want me to be? More successful. How many records can my records break? More records. But, but I'm the best. But are you a different animal?
and the same beast. What the f does that mean? What a do, peeps. Whoa. Is he talking about? That day, Greenbow County. And when I got there, I figured since I'd gone this far, I might as well turn around, just keep on going. When I got to. Sure. Say something. Um, hey, Tom, have you heard that Concave is branding themselves as a co op and not a DAO now? How do you feel about that? It's awesome. It's awesome because, uh, you know, everybody contributes when we win and when, certainly when we lose too. We win as a team, we lose as a team. Oh, well, imagine as I enter anew that through an invite on Discord, I can't help but to join. No, I can't help but to create memes for a new role. What are these different roles? What a beautiful role, says a minor to a form, and I created a meme. What a meme, I turn myself into a whore. I'm tired of getting rubbled in a project that has a same forks in it. But this project is spoons and culture, and it's called Concave. I'm tired of getting rumpled in a project that has the same forks in it. But this project is spoons and culture, and it's called Concave. <laughs> すぐさま準備に取り掛かる。俺たちは今から死ぬんですか。そうだ。どうせ死ぬなら最後に戦って死ねということですか。そうだ。いや、どうせ死ぬなら<笑> まったくもって無意味だ。どんなに夢や希望を持っていても。幸福な人生を送ることができたとしても。ならば人生には意味がないのか。そもそも生まれてきたことに意味はなかったのか。死んだ仲間もそうなのか。あの兵士たちも。無